Everybody bear with me, I have a cold. Uh, it's the Phillies fault. For people who don't know me, I'm Felicia McCauley, and I used to work for LifeQuarry.com as their photographer for Iverson. Uh, but now I'm working for the Hidden Reef in Levittown, Pennsylvania. I always like to start off this presentation with the clarion angel. Um, how many people have a DSLR camera? Wow, a lot of people do. Uh, so, uh, you know, I started off with the, the benefits of uh, DSLR over a point and shoot camera, but you guys already know DSLRs have interchangeable lenses, you have more control over your settings, um, a lot more like, lenses and other accessories. Um, you know, they're a lot cheaper than they used to be. And point and shoot cameras have a longer shutter life, which is the thing I hate about the most. You can't take fish pictures with them. Um, okay, so to prepare for taking pictures in your aquarium, um, I recommend wearing dark clothing so they don't have like wear a white t-shirt. Uh, it's going to glare on the tank. Um, turn off all the lights in the room if you can. Um, of course, scrub the algae and wipe the outside for glass. Yeah. And if the water is cloudy, you can put like water water polishing pads in the filters. Um, turn off your pumps so your corals aren't waving everywhere. Um, Oh yeah. 
I used to have one of those Cardiff bullet tanks, and this top picture was actually taken in my Cardiff bullet tank from like, the back. It doesn't work well with photography. Oh, sorry. M5? Thank you. Okay, white balance. Um, white balance adjusts the scrub's color temperature of the lighting. Um, so, you know, like we said, your eyes pretty much have automatic white balance, but your camera has to be told what white is. Your camera doesn't know what white is. So everybody's camera, even if you have a point and shoot, it has uh, white balance settings. Um, I don't know if anybody brought their camera. These are the symbols that usually, that most cameras use. If it doesn't say white balance, it'll have one of those symbols. Um, and then if you don't want to white, if you don't want to use white balance on your camera, you could always do like post processing with Photoshop like, levels and um, you know, color balance can help take some of the blue hue out. Um, and when I photograph corals, I don't always set the white balance to like perfectly white because most people want to see a little bit more blue in a coral photo. Like I've seen pictures where people set their white balance to like exact white and it looked like the corals were photographed under like broad daylight. But you know, when you look at them in a tank or even in, in the ocean, that's not what they look like to your eyes. So I try to like, I try to make the pictures come out how they look to my eyes. So I, I usually set my white balance on my camera to auto, and that leaves just enough blue in uh, that I can work with it later in Photoshop with you know, the levels to uh, to make it the right color. Okay, exposure. Um, exposure is a combination of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, and you can play with these settings to to get the right exposure. Um, shutter speed basically is how long the shutter remains open. You can have it open for you know, up to 30 seconds or on the bulb setting, you can hold it down uh, and it'll stay down as long as you stay open as long as you hold the button down. Um, and the aperture is was one of the hardest things for me to understand when I first got into photography. Uh, basically, the aperture is the uh, the opening of the camera lens. If you um, if you imagine, it's like a, an eye squinting. Um, and then the ISO is the sensitivity of the image sensor. I don't know if anybody ever used film cameras back in the day, how they have different uh, film speeds. Well, ISO is basically uh, a digital version of film speed. Okay, so aperture is, I have a little picture here showing uh, what happens when you change the f-stop. Um, I got it. So a higher f-stop has a smaller aperture, and that's uh, you know, that would be the smaller opening that one on the right there. Uh, so that would be that would make more of the background in focus, but it also makes uh, makes the photo darker, less light gets into the sensor. Um, a lower f-stop, and that's actually kind of popular right now in photography, having like a low f-stop with all the uh, you know, blurriness in the background. People find that appealing. Um, I guess using a high f-stop would be mostly for macro photography. Most people would shoot like on a lower f-stop normally. But if you're if you're too close to something, then your depth of field is smaller, so you have to use a higher f-stop. And we'll get to that later. Um, I think I hit a button again. Okay, so the depth of field is uh, how much of the photo is in focus and bokeh uh, is the little circles of light in the background when uh, the blurriness when uh, when you have a low f-stop. That's what that is. Um, and here's a photo comparison of what it looks like to have a high f-stop as opposed to a low f-stop. This is a like a macro photo where one of them has the one on the right has a very low f-stop and not a lot of the coral is in focus. And the one on the left has a higher f-stop, so a lot more of the photo. 
photo is in focus. <laughs> Shutter speed, um, like I said, is how long the shutter remains open when you're taking a photo. And it's measured in seconds, so to change the shutter speed on your camera, it'll be measured um, with a number. Um, so if your camera says it's on shutter speed 200, it's actually taking uh, 1 200th of a second to take the photo. And if it's measured in seconds, it has a little quotation mark symbol after it. So when you're shooting fast moving objects like fish, you want to set your shutter speed higher um, to, I usually shoot at about 200 on fish. Um, dragging the shutter, it's helpful with um, like coral photos. Uh, dragging the shutter just means you're holding the shutter open longer, and if, when you do that, more light gets in, so more, more color comes to the photo and the colors come out brighter. Okay, ISO, um, like I said, is how sensitive the sensor is to light. And, uh, my camera doesn't have a very great sensor because it's a little older, it's a D60, but the new cameras that are coming out now have ISO sensors uh, that are really high-tech and, and you, know, you can have your ISO turned all the way up to, you know, in the thousands and, and it would come out looking beautiful, but, you know, on older cameras like this, a lot of people are finding that they have to shoot on like 400 or 800 ISO at the most. But the newer cameras are, are really nice with the with the better sensors. So that's not really something that people have to worry about much anymore with the newer cameras that are coming out. Um, but if your ISO is too high, it'll just be really noisy and grainy in the photo. So for macro photography, um, of course you want to use very low ISO because that's when you're going to notice it the most. Okay, accessories that you can have for um, shooting in aquariums, you should have a tripod. Um, when you're shooting corals, it's very low light and you're not going to want to use the flash most of the time, so you can, it's, it's a really good idea to have a tripod for shooting corals because you're going to be shooting on a low shutter speed. Um, external flash is great for shooting fish in aquariums. Um, you might think that you know, using a flash on an aquarium doesn't make sense, but um, I use an external flash that I either hold or I have a stand that holds the flash. And if you turn it, um, it takes a little bit of uh, preparation and tinkering to get it right the first time. But um, you have it kind of like bouncing towards the top at an angle and it just hits the fish and it doesn't reflect off of the tank. So if you play with it for a while, you can get it just right and, and the pictures come out a lot better than if you didn't have a flash. And believe it or not, you can use the pop-up flash for fish photography. I've done it, but it's not the best. But it's possible. But I definitely recommend a flash and a flash stand. Um, and underwater viewers or underwater camera bags are great for taking photos of corals. Don't dump your camera in the water because I've done that <laughs> at work twice. Um, what's that? <laughs> um, okay, so photographing fish is probably the most difficult part of aquarium photography because of how they swim and move. Um, so you definitely want to have your shutter speed set as 